Alright lads, so today we got the new version update, version 15.1.0 Introducing a really good quality of life and we're gonna break down everything that was added in this update in today's video Now by the time you are watching it, the update would have happened yesterday But yesterday we had so much news to go over, so we had to postpone it till today But first up, our first change up with the new update is a new app icon Now for the most part, it's still the same thing, it's itch go from 1000, your blood will round 16 The only difference now is that it does say that the 8th anniversary is coming soon and that it is. The 8th anniversary will literally be here in less than two weeks time. And it's also safe to assume that once the 8th anniversary does officially start, there will be a new app icon with the 8th anniversary character or a potential part two character. Little fun trivia for you lads, only Ichigo has been the app icon besides one very rare exception for some reason during Halloween, I believe of 2018. Instead of getting Ichigo, for some reason we got a Halloween version of Yoruichi as an app icon. And that is the only time they've ever used a non Ichigo for an app icon. So Focusing the trend that Ichigo always has to be the app icon is again very likely that Ichigo will be part of this 8th anniversary whether part 1 or part 2 and wherever he is that is going to be our new app icon with of course the 8th anniversary text but maybe they might do something different this year who knows Next up, they have officially removed skill keys. For those that aren't aware, skill keys have been made redundant around two to three months ago. That was when we got one of our better updates ever, where you no longer need raid characters, and therefore there was no longer need for skill keys. Nowadays, if you're trying to max out a character, all you need is crystals and jewels. And that's really good. It's one of the best updates we ever received. But when that update did happen, skill keys were still in the game. They were still obtainable in certain places like the beginner challenges. And now with this update, they've officially been removed. So RIP skill keys. And they've been compensated with coins. So you might have woken up to tap bit more coins. Maybe you didn't even realize. I didn't either. After that, we have a disruptive behavior and misconduct form. Now, this is Caleb's new addition on trying to catch those that are cheating in this particular game. If you click on contact us, there is now a section here, report cheating or disruptive behavior. If you click on that, it will then take you to an email where you can fill out some extra information. To go alongside that, there's also now extra information given when completing an arena game and also a co-op lobby, for example. If you look at the bottom, left of the screen there is now a log ID so you can actually give Caleb the exact match ID on where the person was cheating. This should hopefully be able to allow Caleb to get the information they need, confirm if they were cheating and then of course deal with them swiftly. Alongside that we also now have the IDs displayed at the end of the game so no longer we have to find the player's name, search it up on the friends list then get the ID. So just from the end screen alone you can get the ID of the player and also the exact game it happened in. This should make reporting cheaters a lot easier, should hopefully mean they get dealt with swiftly and overall just to make the game a better place because if you are cheating you are actually making the game a worse place next up we have the adjustments to the treatment of lost connections during co-op this one's kind of worded weirdly i will say but it says here co-op quests have been adjusted so that if a player who made the room is disconnected the room will automatically be closed now this isn't when you're in the actual game this is only talking about when you are in the lobby there have been times when i'm playing co-op i joined the lobby and everyone's sitting there for like two to three minutes and the room isn't starting because the host isn't even there. The host DC'd, but the room is still actually open for players to join. This overall kind of just wastes our time, especially if you don't know the icon that does say they've disconnected. So now if the host is in a lobby, they haven't started it yet, but they have DC'd, the room will now automatically be closed. So no longer will people have to wait there in a lobby that will basically never start. I haven't experienced this in quite some time because most of the time when I am playing cup, I'm hosting my own lobbies, but this is definitely a nice change. Next up, and this one's potentially controversial, we have the adjustments to how some accessory effects are displayed. So the appearance of some accessories during the accessory machine use, fusion and recycling have been changed. And what this essentially means is that no longer can we see the 3D models of accessories. I will say it looks worse now. Going from the 3D models to now just a simple PNG does make it look a lot worse. At the same time, I'm not really that stressed about it. I do miss it, but a lot of times when we are doing these accessory stuff, right? When we see the 3D models, when we're summoning, when we're doing our fusions, we always just end up skipping it anyway. And I guess I can see why Caleb are doing it. They are introducing new accessories sometime in the future. And if it means they don't have to waste time doing a 3D model for an accessory that no one's really going to ever look at, we never really get the option to look at them in the first place. It's only during those animations that we skip. If it means they can make more accessories at a faster pace, then I guess it's good. Again, I'm a bit indifferent on it. I do prefer the 3D models. And it was nice seeing them during the animations when I decide not to skip it. But it really doesn't affect me how I play the game. I'm still going to play like normal. It's just going to take some time to get used to it. It's a very weird change. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about it. 
After that, the Game Center link option has now officially been removed. We spoke about this last week, informing those that are currently only linked to Game Center that currently have their account to link to an Apple ID, to link to a KNAP ID to keep your account safe. It's now officially gone, so no longer can you link with Game Center. So again, if you haven't already gone ahead and linked to another service, go ahead and do it right now if you are on iOS, because if you haven't, you could potentially still lose your account. Now for some improvements, character link and OS accessory sets. Players can now save these sets of character links accessories on the preparation screen for single player quests, co-op quests, epic raids, limit breaker quests, augment, and also Sankamon quests. This has easily got to be one of the better updates that we have received, because it's going to make character building significantly faster, especially because when it comes to building our characters, we always use the same exact accessories, the same exact links. So now what you can do is go to augment, and you can see here we have the load set and save set. So this is my exact build for a no affiliation character, right? I can now save it. Let's save it into set number one, and I can just call it no affiliation. And boom, look at that, it's saved. And let's say, for example, I wanted to work on Noelle. I wanted to use her. Well, now all I have to do is go to accessories, click on load set, and it's there saved. Look at that, so much quicker, less buttons required. She is now built. Amazing change. But it's also worth mentioning this also goes for links too. I do like that they have separated it. So once more, not the best example, but we have just a full recharge build. This is what I want to have on most of my characters, hypothetically. Then again, I just come in, save it and then I can now load this into any future character. I recommend making a few builds. When it comes to links, you want to have like a NAD build, a recharge build, a full stamina damage build. Just so you have the option, so whenever it does come to time to make a new character build, you can just load it because you have it saved. And then when it comes to accessories once more, you probably want to make an affiliation-based build. So for sorry, but a spider, no affiliation. And keep in mind, you can only have five sets. And I guess what's also cool is that even though we are limited to only five sets, it is dependent on the mode that you are playing. So right now we're in co-op quests. If I go to my load set, for example, I have nothing saved because I haven't actually made a set for co-op. So while we have access to five sets, that is for every part of the game. So you have five sets for co-op, five sets for epic raid, five sets for limit breaker, five sets for single player quests. So we technically have access to more than five sets, which I think is really cool. This overall is a great change. Gonna speed up how we just build our characters. If you have those sets saved, if you already set them up, it's going to be so much quicker when switching to different characters. After that, we have a few small improvements to Epic Raids. In this case, when starting a room in Epic Raid with a character that does not meet the Epic Raid entry requirements, a set that does meet said requirements will now automatically be selected. This, I actually didn't even realize wasn't a thing, but it was when you were joining Epic Raid Lobby. So hypothetically, if you tried to join a guildmate, if you had a set saved with that character, it would automatically switch to that. However, if you're trying to open a lobby and you had a technique character selected, but you're trying to open a lobby for only speed characters, characters, it originally would not switch to the speed character. You would have to manually do it yourself. Now, it would just automatically switch to a character set that you have saved that meets those requirements. Again, most of the updates that we have gotten this update has just been to reduce the time it takes to do those small tasks. And this is a nice change. Same goes to the next one. When you now do a five times soul ticket in Epic Raids, you can now skip the end animation. We've been able to do that in COD for quite some time, but Epic Raids, it would play out all the drops. It adds like an extra 10 seconds to your runs, and that might not be a big deal, but when you're doing a lot of runs consecutively, those extra five to 10 seconds does add up over time. So now you can just get in and out and start another quest a lot more quicker. And lastly, the item screen has seen a small improvement. After locking accessory through the accessory detail screen, tapping close will no longer take the player back to the top of the accessory list. This is also really good, again, as someone that has actually worked on a lot of different accessories as of lately too. When I do decide to lock an accessory, it takes you all the way back up to the top of the list. And that accessory that you've been working on is near the bottom. You have to waste time scrolling down trying to find it once more. And that's basically all there is with version 15.1.0. Again, a small update in nature, but it did bring quite a lot. I think the biggest thing here, clearly, is the character set. This is going to be an absolute time saver in every part of the game. And that's what I kind of like too, that it is for every part. We have seen sometimes where updates, or game modes in particular, get an update, and it's only in that particular game mode. So it's nice to see this particular update happen for every part of the game. So whether you're playing Cup, Epic Raze, Limit Breaker, Senkamon, or even on the Augment screen, setting up a character will now be faster than ever before. So overall, this update brought some great improvements. The only weird slash negative thing is many that, you know, accessory change, right? No longer can we see the 3D models. It's weird, I don't like it, but it's not that big of a deal. I at least to me. With that said though, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.